What's up, DJ Tech Tools crew? It's Chris Brackley in the lab today, and I've got a quick tip for you talking about DJing with one deck. Now, obviously, that doesn't sound like a very fun experience, and it's kind of not, but you know, ultimately, you might have to do it at some point in your DJ career. Whether that's one turntable is broken, you know, CDJ or turntable is broken in the club, or just gone altogether. I've done one gig, I've done a few gigs where I've turned up and there's only been one deck in the building. And you know, what are you supposed to do with that? Well, thankfully, with DVSB, that was Serato DJ or with Tractor, you can get over that. Now, there are other ways of doing what I'm talking about here. I'm focusing on the instant doubles method. There was in Scratch Live, there used to be a way you could flip the actual inputs. So the right hand deck would be controlling the left hand virtual deck and then back and forth like that. And you could do it like that. In Tractor, you can assign a single deck. You can set it to control any one of your four decks. So one, two, three, or four, you can easily assign that within that. I find that really confusing. From my point of view, what I like to have is this is a consistent control, be this a vinyl deck or a CDJ, it's a consistent control, one side or the other. So I always know when I'm playing on this turntable right here, then it's gonna be on this fader and this side of the cross fader and everything else. I'm not gonna get confused in the mix and suddenly to like do a spin back or something and realize that I've actually pulled back the wrong deck. I don't want that. So for me, the instant doubles technique is far superior and I'll show you why. I'm gonna start with Serato DJ and then we'll move on to Tractor after that. Now Serato DJ is really set up to do this very simply and very intuitively. Um, obviously you can use it for this function, you know, using one deck, but also it's for, you know, beat juggling and, you know, rocking two copies, slipping one back and forth and so on. So it's all very easy to actually work with in Serato DJ, very easy to set up. The first thing you want to do is go into your setup screen on Serato DJ and you want to make sure that instant doubles in the DJ preferences there, instant doubles is ticked. So that will mean that as soon as you duplicate a track to any deck, it will go from the same position when you load it. So we come out of the setup there and we need to make sure that the deck we don't have control of, in our case, it's deck one here on the left hand side. So I'm gonna just set that to internal mode and just make sure that's ready and set to internal because we don't have any kind of input running for that. It's just running off the computer's own steam, the software's own control inside. So the right hand side though, I've got on relative mode here. So I'm running, you know, just running time code on this CDJ. And again, it could just be with your vinyl, whatever you're using. And I'm playing that in. And that's absolutely fine. Now, that on the simplest level, because you've got instant doubles activated, what you can do is just literally drag one to the other, and then you'll find that that goes across. So that's how you would get through your set, basically. So I'm starting my set off on deck B, on deck two. I've got that playing through there, and now I need to get another track going. So right, I'm gonna instant double that one across to the left-hand side. That's now in place, I'm gonna switch them. And now I'm free to stop this right-hand deck. The left-hand deck is gonna play under its own steam and all I'm gonna do is just load up a different track and I'm ready to go. And I can just mix this one in as normal. Obviously you don't have really any control on the internal deck. You could set up MIDI controls and so on to actually control the BPM of the, of the left-hand deck. But as a rule, you just want to do all your mixing on the one you've got the actual physical control of that's gonna make life easier. So now I've done that, I've mixed into this new track and then I can just, again, instant double that across to the other side. So now that one's finished again, I can get on to my next track. It's really quite straightforward. It's just something you have to kind of practice and get used to the technique of doing. As I say, I've done this for hours on hours. You know, it's very, very sort of intuitive once you've got your head around what you're doing and you just get that sort of methodology. Now, where it might go wrong is that what you might do is be going through your library, you forget to do your double. So if I just get that going across on that side. So I'm playing on this right-hand deck and I've forgotten to double across to the left-hand deck and I've already gone and I've ended up going through my playlist and so on. Now, if you were to load the track that's obviously in your library now, so let's say you're using either a native controller or you're just gonna map it. So in my case, I'm gonna MIDI map, load to deck, and I'm gonna MIDI map that to this MIDI fighter Spectra and the same on the right-hand side. Now, obviously, if I hit load to deck now on my MIDI controller, that is gonna load a different track over to the left-hand deck. It's not gonna instant double. So that's why in this MIDI panel here, we've actually got instant double control as well. So we can mini-map that. So the left-hand deck, 
on the right hand deck and you just map those like you do with anything else in Serato DJ. You can use any controller for this, you know, you can use your Dices, you can use a Mini Fighter. Uh, the native controllers like the DDJ SP1, the Akai AFX and so on, you can actually double tap the load button and that will instant double automatically. And that applies to, you know, DDJ SX or your all-in-one controllers as well. They will automatically instant double for you with a double tap, which is really cool. Obviously with a standard Mini setup, you don't have that, so you need those distinct instant double button so now in my case even though i'm in a totally different part of my library i can still now hit that instant double and it's doubled across as you can see to the left hand deck and i'm there so even if it's only a temporary midi mapping that you just use for that one night when you've only got the one deck or something like that it's very simple to do very simple to set up and it's just really handy to have that there so you know wherever you are in your library again i'm in a totally different part of my library and I can instant double to the right hand deck and across it goes. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of phasing going on there. Now that's the one thing you want to do with your instant doubles is you want to get it across as quickly as you can. Obviously if you're using a crossfader with a steep slope like a scratch cut in, then what you'll want to do is kind of start bringing down the one fader and so on. You don't want to have both running at exactly the same time and they will start to phase, especially with vinyl because it's got that kind of that drift up and down so you want to make sure that you get your instant double done and then get across and get your switch done pretty much straight away and what you might want to do is just go with the up faders instead and that will give you a smoother transition between the two but again it's just working out that workflow between the, the actual controlling deck and the internal deck you'll get used to that with just a bit of practice it's worth trying at home Now tractor is very, very similar in principle. We've got the time code deck on the right hand deck, that's deck B, and that's playing through perfectly fine. We wanna make sure we go into our preferences and just go into loading over there and make sure that duplicate deck when loading same track is ticked. And that will mean that when I do load this same track, it's gonna go in. Now what you'll notice on tractor is it doesn't always pick up the BPM the first time. So this is now playing its original BPM. So I'm gonna to need to do that a second time and now it's picked up the BPM and now I can do my thing. So I stop it on this side, I'm ready to go. I've got my internal deck playing on the left-hand side. So you can see the principle is the same, but often you will need to just double the instant double, if you like, so do it twice and that will make sure that it's exactly locked into place. Now, we can, of course, MIDI map that. So we go into the controller manager and it's a slightly different sort of way of doing it. I'll just delete these and start afresh so you can see what I'm doing. Basically, I'm gonna add an in and it's a track deck and I'm gonna duplicate track deck A. So this will duplicate whatever's in track deck A and then I want to learn it and I'm gonna set that to deck B in the assignment. So that means that anything now that's playing in deck A will play copy over into deck B with that assignment there and I can do the other way around as well. So duplicate whatever's in track deck B and I'm gonna set that to deck A. So now I've got that set up so now I can duplicate across like so and obviously the time code's not running let's start with a fresh track over on this side so that's now playing and i just all i have to do is hit my duplicate deck b into deck a and now it's gone across and you can see again it hasn't picked up the bpm do it twice it's picked up the bpm now i'm ready to roll so it is a slightly different slightly fiddlier technique with tractor but it's still easy to do and something that's definitely worth playing with you might find that it's actually your preference to mainly work off one deck if you've got a really strong hand for scratching and so on you might find that's actually preferable for you if not if you get stuck with one deck at a gig this is a great get out of jail free card for you so check out the written article on djtechtools.com for a little bit more detail about the mapping and so on and thank you for watching